Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my course. So in the previous session we looked at or we introduced ourselves to the concepts of equilibrium and kinetics and also I believe we looked at some of the aspects about identifying which particular state or characteristics such as kinetics is important. For example, we looked at trying to identify is a system under equilibrium control, kinetic control or mixer control and so on. So during the course of the next few sessions, we are going to delve into greater depth or detail with respect to equilibrium now, right. So I believe we already uh, looked at some of the aspects or examples relevant to the importance of equilibrium. I believe one example we looked at I think in the previous session was that we looked at trying to identify the maximum heavy metal removal at a certain pH let us say, right. Heavy metals can be precipitated out and given the relevant pH and the ligand concentration, you can you know estimate to a great degree of accuracy the uh, greatest possible removal or you know the highest percentage removal of the relevant heavy metal or mixture of heavy metals. Yes, that is one particular example, but that is applicable in a, I mean equilibrium is applicable to any particular engineered or natural systems. So, we are going to uh, move on and I believe we are going to also discuss about you know what uh, you know drives or defines equilibrium now, right. I want to know let us say is a particular system feasible or not feasible in the first case. So, I believe we started discussing the aspect called Gibbs energy or Gibbs free energy or change in Gibbs energy now, right. So, let us look at the definition first, right and most people are aware of this. So, delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S, right. So, delta G is the change in Gibbs free energy or change in Gibbs energy of a particular system. Delta H change in enthalpy more or less gives you an idea about the heat energy being released or being taken into the system and delta S gives you an idea about the change in entropy. S more or less uh, let us say right the greater the disorder right the greater the entropy now. And in general delta G is a state variable what does this mean right. So, in general we know let us say if this is G how do reactions occur let us say you can visualize them as if it is going from state G1 to G2 right. So, they are going to fall down the ladder you can visualize that right from state G1 to G2. So, what uh, when we say delta G or you know Gibbs free energy is a state variable what does that mean? It, des it does not depend upon the path it takes to go from 1 to 2 right. It is independent of the path it takes for the system to go from state 1 to state 2. That is what we understand when we say uh, we call that a call Gibbs free energy a state variable right. And again uh, one other aspect to consider or two other minor aspects is that delta G changes in the same direction as or G changes in the same direction as H or change in enthalpy, but delta G changes in the opposite direction as change in entropy right. So, that is something to keep in mind and which we are going to discuss later on yes. So, let us move on. And I guess we are going to talk about process feasibility now. So, what defines or how can we understand let us say or relate the change in Gibbs free energy to equilibrium or the relevant concepts that we come across in nature or in engineered systems, right. So, you want to know let us say a particular reaction is it feasible I mean would it go forward or no, right. So, for that in general we always have learned to look at delta G, right and what is that equal to I guess we know that that is equal to delta H minus T delta S. And in general I guess this is common knowledge. So, whenever delta G is less than 0 or is negative we say that the process is feasible. When delta G is greater than 0 we say that the process is infeasible and when delta G is equal to 0 we say that the system is at equilibrium. So, let us just try to understand these aspects for a second I guess. So, in general we will again go back to the previous figure that we looked at. So, if I have G here and let us say if I am trying to indicate the two states. So, the initial state is G 1 and the final state is G 2 right and obviously here the change delta G is equal to G 2 minus G 1 and as you can see state G 2 or state 2 is at a lower energy state compared to state 
1 or G1, right? Thus, it is negative and as you can see, you know, if you can visualize that, it is falling down the ladder, right, the system. So, thus, this process is feasible, right? This is feasible. And obviously, though, the second aspect that we just looked at or we just have here written down, I guess, let us say G2 is at a higher energy state and G1 or pardon me, 2 is at a higher energy state and 1 is at a lower energy state. So, delta G, right, which is G2 minus G1, let us say, is going to be positive, right. So, the system cannot move up the ladder, right. Again, for visualization purposes, I am saying it is moving up the ladder. So, obviously, that means that the system is infeasible. But as you can visualize, the system can go from G2 to G1 though, right. The reverse reaction is feasible. This is what we can understand from here. So, this indicates that the reverse reaction is feasible, but the reaction that goes from 1 to 2 is infeasible, right. And obviously, the third aspect I guess is self-explanatory. So, when both the states are at the same energy state, let us say, or energy levels, uh, whichever way you want to understand that. There is no, what do we say, further intensity to either move up or down the ladder, pardon me, move down the ladder. So, we can say that the system has reached the maximum extent possible at that particular conditions of temperature and pressure. So, it has just traveled the, so we looked at equilibrium as how far can the system go, right? at the given conditions of temperature and pressure. So, when G1 and G2 are the same, it means the system has reached equilibrium or travel the farthest extent possible, right, or reach the maximum extent possible under the given temp conditions of temperature and pressure. So, again, uh, so delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, right, and now we are going to look at the individual terms in greater detail. And pardon me, I guess. Okay. So, again we have delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S. So, again let us look at how these apply to let us say uh, delta H and delta S and so on let us say, right. So, in general H obviously as we talked about or delta H is decrease in enthalpy, enthalpy means it favors the reaction. Right. So, what does that mean though? So, the decrease in enthalpy means delta H is negative, when delta H is negative, right, that promotes delta G being negative, right, and that is what you can see from this particular reaction here, when delta G H is negative, uh, it uh, promotes delta G being negative, that means it fa favors the reaction now, right. So, what does uh, delta H negative mean, let us say, again, if I draw, have here uh, Again, this is just for visualization purpose, right. So, here let us say H1 to H2, right. So, heat energy will be released in this process delta H is equal to H2 minus H1, right. And as you see, that is negative, yes. So, what does this mean though? The energy that is stored in uh, state 1, let us say, is going to be released as heat energy here. So, whenever delta H is negative, what does that mean? It is an exothermic reaction. And obviously, what does that mean? That means release of heat energy, yes. And obviously, again increase in entropy, what does that mean? Delta S being uh, positive, or delta S being positive, right, promotes delta G being negative. Yes, and that favors the reaction, right. So, let us look at an example here. I have an example here. Let us look at what this means. So, in general, entropy, I guess, gives you an idea about the degree of disorder in the system. So, again I am using a lot of layman's terms here, so that people, uh, it is easier for the per students or the audience to understand what I am talking about. So, for example, let us say if a solid, 
is changing phase or you know transforming to liquid phase the degree of disorder or the entropy will increase and again if a liquid again further transforms into a gaseous phase or gas let us say not gaseous phase pardon me. So, it is again going to increase the degree of disorder in your system or or if there is an increase in number of moles let us say of this system. So, what does that mean? So, let us say initially I had 1 mole and that either due to combustion or any other relevant reactions which we are going to discuss in greater detail you know now uh, transforms into 2 or 3 or so moles. You see now you have an increase in number of moles that more or less means there is a greater degree of disorder in the system right and that means again delta S is positive right. In the second state there are more number of moles right. So, delta S is positive right and again that means delta H delta G will tend to be negative and that obviously again favors the reaction as we defined it I guess right. Reaction defined as in, in this case I believe we have been talking about uh, going from state 1 to state 2 right. So, again uh, one final example here. So, we have NaCl in the solid form what we say dissociating it to Na plus and Cl minus you know when it is dissolved in water obviously the aqueous phase Aq stands for aqueous phase which we in general indicate when we are have a compound dissolved in uh, water now right. And here we have let us say let us look at the delta S value at the standard conditions, standard conditions this particular uh, nomenclature indicates standard conditions. So, change in entropy at standard conditions and the value that I have here is 43.4 joules per Kelvin right. And obviously, if someone asks you to uh, what do we say guess what is the uh, sign here you can obviously say it is going to be positive right plus 43.4 joule per Kelvin and why is that obviously now you have a solid phase and it is dissociating into uh, what do we say aqueous phases and more importantly initially you had 1 mole and now you have 1 plus 1 2 moles. So, the disorder or the greater the disorder we know that the delta S is going to be positive. So, that is one example that you would see yes. So, another example that I have is 2 NO2 in the gaseous phase you know and this it seems can be at equilibrium with N2O4 in the gaseous phase. So, now if I look at the change in entropy of this system and the magnitude looks like is 175.83 joules per Kelvin now right and someone asks you you know to uh, think of what the signage is going to be. So, here both are the gaseous phase. So, we cannot really draw many conclusions from there, but if I look at this particular aspect as in initially I have number of moles as being 2 and now I have 1 mole here. So, right. So, the degree of disorder is less. So, what does that mean? Delta S is going to be obviously negative here and this in general would uh, not favor the reaction to go through right. So, obviously you need to look at the standard change in uh, enthalpy to be able to give a final call or take a final call about delta G either being positive or negative right. Anyway a few examples here that we looked at. So, let us see what we have next. So, okay. so we talked about the driving forces for uh, you know uh, uh, equilibrium let us say or for system to reach equilibrium pardon me right. We looked at Gibbs free energy. So, now we are going to move on to look at applications to reactions now right. So, you now let us say you want to you can calculate delta G values, but we are going to look at it in greater detail about how to relate that to a particular system or let us say a system is going from state 1 to state 2. You want to be able to relate that. So, again before we go further though obviously, we need to look at what is the Gibbs energy of a mixture right. Here keep in mind we are not talking about uh, change, but we are just talking about the Gibbs energy of a mixture what is that or how do I calculate that. So, let us say in the mixture I have compound A, B, C, D and so on or I uh, number of compounds. So, how do I calculate that let us say right and that obviously can be calculated by summation of N i G i bar N i is number of moles of compound I right 
GI bar, a new concept I guess is Gibbs energy per mole of compound I and that is actually also equal to mu I which again is a new term is the chemical potential of component or compound I right. So, now we have a new term uh, what do we say mu I or the chemical potential of I. So, we are going to discuss that in a bit more detail right. So, uh, what would you understand uh, when let us say somebody says uh, someone has let us say person A has potential right and here again we are talking in layman's terms. So, what do you understand let us say when somebody has uh, potential now right. So, it means uh, the person or the system let us say has the capacity right again these are all layman's terms. So, you do not need to note them down obviously capacity to do something let us say a very generic term to do something right. Yes, again uh, so I think a uh, better example would be to look at let us say potential energy let us say. So, the higher the potential the higher the capacity to be able to do something worthwhile let us say. So, you can uh, draw a, a corollary here or look at the analogy here right and you can think of chemical potential in the same way as in a mixture or in uh, with respect to reactions either going forward or back let us say. As we know how do reactions go through let us say you know we know that you know with G1 and G2. So, we know that the system would fall down the ladder from G1 to G2 right and we know that the G of the mixture let us say what is that equal to I guess summation of N i G i bar which is also as we just looked at N i uh, mu i I guess right we can even derive this right. And what does that mean now you see that uh, whenever the chemical potential is high let us say right there is greater potential for the system to fall down the ladder and for the reaction to proceed through. So, the greater the potential of the system it has a greater tendency or it can let us say go down the potential and uh, make the reaction favorable you know that is just for your purpose of understanding now right. So, again a minor aspect that we are going to look at. So, in general we call or we can say potential equal to right and what is this equal to I guess D G of the system or mixture right by D N I and that would be equal to as we just looked at here I guess uh, what is that equal to I guess D uh, pardon me summation of N I mu I by D N I and that obviously is equal to mu I I guess right. So, that is what we are trying to look at so potential chemical potential that is how it uh, comes about yes. So, again uh, the take home message is that the higher the chemical potential of a particular uh, chemical that more or less relates to higher uh, energy state or Gibbs energy of the mixture and that would mean a greater tendency or potential for the reaction to go through or fall down the ladder which more or less translates to the reaction going forward right. So, let us see what we have uh, next I guess. So, the next aspect I guess we have is uh, applying this to the Gibbs energy change for chemical process or obviously for a reaction now right. So, here we are going to look at uh, what we say trying to so for a very small change let us say or infinitesimal change in reaction let us say. I want to be able to calculate the change in uh, Gibbs energy or how is Gibbs energy uh, going to be affected by a small change or infinitesimal change in uh, change in the reaction now right or when the ex reaction has gone through by a small extent now right. So, first let us take an example of a, a reaction here a generic example. So, here we have stoichiometric coefficient of A times compound A stoichiometric coefficient B. Uh, going to see 
So, here we have this stoichiometric coefficients mu a, mu b, c and mu d right. So, a plus b goes to c plus c and d pardon me and moles of uh, a I guess stoichiometric coefficient you have that let us say. So, this is the general uh, reaction now. So, let us define a term let us say saying that the small change in reaction right is the Greek term z right I guess uh, my handwriting is very poor ok z. So, for a small change in the reaction let us say I want to be able to equate that to the change in moles of e compound A, B, C and D right. Let us say the change in number of moles of A, B, C and D. So, how do I do that let us because I am still missing a few terms right. So, how do I do that let us say. So, obviously as people are aware we can normalize that by looking at the stoichiometric coefficients right. And obviously, because A and B are being lost and C and D are being formed, we are going to have to use the relevant signage here, right. And so, this is something that we have here and uh, we'll, we are going to use this later on. So, let us say I am going to call this equation 1, let us say, right. So, next aspect is we want to look at a sm for a small change in reaction, what are we looking at? Gibbs energy of the system, how is it changing? So, obviously, we first need to calculate the Gibbs energy of the system or the mixture initially right. So, what is that equal to? I think we looked at that earlier equal to n i mu i right and that again is equal to what now? Uh, anyway, we do not need to go into greater detail here or I guess yes it is worthwhile n a mu a plus n b mu b right plus n d n c mu c plus n d mu d right yes and we have that here. And so, obviously again what are we looking at? Uh, this is the initial uh, what do we say Gibbs energy of the system or the mixture this as in this particular uh, term or set of uh, variables here. And what do we want though? We want to observe for a small change in reaction how is the Gibbs energy changing right. And we already uh, defined uh, for a small change in reaction as dz right. So, if I take the derivative here d g of the system d z and that is equal to what now d by d z equal to d by d z of n a mu a plus n b mu b plus n c mu c plus n d mu d right. And now, I guess uh, let us try to uh, get this right here and that would be equal to uh, what now here please mu a into d by n a of d z plus mu b into d and b by d z plus mu c d and c by d z plus mu d into derivative of what now number of moles of d for a small change in or extend in the reaction I guess. So, right and what do we see here? Let us try to relate these particular terms to what we just calculated here in this equation 1 right and what do we get here I guess? We are going to get d n a by d z a derivative of number of moles of a by number of mole by for a small change in the reaction is going to be equal to minus mu a right. So, that obviously is going to be minus mu a u a plus again what is this? This is a stoichiometric coefficient and this is the chemical potential of a right and again not plus here minus mu b plus mu c mu c plus mu t mu d right. Uh, so, instead of going on to a fresh page and then losing track of what we are up to here, let us try to summarize what we have looked at uh, thus far here. And so, obviously, this is the take home message. So, I am going to do that here on this part, let us see. So, here we have now dg of the system dz is equal to uh, what now? Summation of ni mu i of the products. Uh, not n i pardon me. So, obviously, that is a bit of a mistake there summation of the stoichiometric coefficient I guess right. 
did we mess something up here no let me just have a look at this now mu a okay seems fine here uh, mu i of the products minus summation of mu i mu i of the reactants here right so this is what we have here and so let us look at uh, let us just uh, review what we have up to we are trying to calculate the change in Gibbs energy for reaction for a small change in the reaction or when the reaction has gone through to a small extent. So, that we define by dz and we try to relate that to change in the number of moles of your particular compound here right and we in reaction 1 we normalize that by the stoichiometric coefficients yes. So, here we are trying to define the change in the number of moles of each compound with the extent of the reaction and then obviously because we are calculating the change in the Gibbs energy we first need to define or calculate what the initial Gibbs energy of the mixture is. So, that we looked at it earlier and so upon expansion this is what we have here yes and so this is what we are trying to calculate all along uh, the change in Gibbs energy of the system for a small extent or change in the reaction and so I guess we have that here and uh, transformation and looking at equation 1 we came up with this now what is that again uh, so let us go on to the next page and then write that up again afresh. So, dg of the system dz or more or less change in Gibbs energy of system for a small extent in or infinitesimal change in the extent of the reaction is equal to what now stoichiometric coefficient of i v i mu i of the products minus v i mu i of the reactants again right. And so, this obviously is equal to what now delta g right. So, obviously if you look at it when will delta g be negative obviously when this term is going to be greater than this term again higher the chemical potential I guess they would like to fall down the ladder. So, uh, that is what we are looking at but that is not greatly applicable here but that is an analogy I am trying to draw here right. So, when this term is greater than this so that is what we are going to uh, have here when that is going to be uh, negative and where did we have that here I guess here A and B are the reactants and C and D are the products here right. So, let us try to have this in a graphical format so that we can understand this uh, better right. So, here we are going to have a particular uh, uh, figure here and here we are going to have G of the system and X is the extent of the reaction and for example, let us say this is how the system can uh, behave right and this is what we have here and so let us say we are trying to look at delta g or more or less dg by dxz. So, more or less what does dg by dxz mean it means the slope of this particular graph or system here. So, let us say I am identifying three particular aspects here right and in this case as you see delta g or dg by dxz is going to be negative the slope is negative here it is equal to 0 and here it is going to be positive right. So, what do we understand here? So, in this particular phase let us say when delta g is going to be negative or the slope is negative let us say you are going to have a reaction that is feasible. Again here we have g or Gibbs energy of the system in uh, on the y axis extent of the reaction x on the x axis. So, think of this now let us say again for visualization purposes. So, if this is g 1 it can fall down to g 2 right and that is how the reaction can go through right and that is where you see delta g being negative or dg by dz being negative. So, obviously when it is equal to or the slope is equal to 0 at this particular point let us say it has reached equilibrium yes and now uh, there is no tendency for the system either to go from g 1 to g 2 or so on it has reached the maximum extent possible. Again what is happening here though? Here let us say G 2 is at a higher energy state let us say again I am using Lehmann's terms please and G 1. So, the system cannot go from G 1 to G 2, but if it wants to uh, not if it wants to the reaction this reaction that takes the state from 2 to 1 is feasible, but not from 1 to 2 though right that is what you understand here when we say delta G in this region here is positive again you see the positive slope here and again you can relate that to what we just uh, looked at earlier dg of the system with 
by dz right and so that is what uh, we just looked at here. So, hopefully this should uh, give a good idea about uh, what we are talking about. So, again uh, you do not need to uh, what do we say mug this up uh, this is for an understanding of the basic principles involved here right. So, again we are going to tie everything up delta g negative means uh, the reaction is feasible delta g being positive means the reaction is not feasible or the reverse reaction is uh, feasible and delta g equal to 0 means the system is at equilibrium right ok. So, let us move on and uh, uh, see what we have next ok. So, next I guess we are going to calculate the Gibbs energies now right. So, you are uh, trying to calculate delta g's right or we have learned how to look at delta g until now and how to relate that to uh, reactions, how to relate that to mixtures and again uh, to take a bigger view not a bigger view pardon me a holistic view uh, right and look at the bigger picture what are we talking about let us say let us just summarize briefly. So, we have uh, we introduced ourselves to equilibrium and kinetics and then we started delving greater into uh, the concepts of equilibrium and there we introduced the concept of change in uh, Gibbs energy delta g and in that aspect we applied that to reactions and we also applied that to mixtures right. And now we are going to uh, further talk about how to calculate Gibbs energies of the system now right and we will talk about kinetics uh, later on maybe a few sessions down the line. So, again I am just giving you this information so that you will have an idea about what it is that we are uh, talking about in relation to the bigger picture again. So, we are still talking about equilibrium here right. So, how do you calculate Gibbs energies I guess. So, before we go further we need to uh, you know understand that there are two aspects involved now once the standard conditions and the other would be the non-standard conditions right. So, obviously we are going to first discuss the relevant aspects or how to calculate Gibbs energies at the standard conditions and then we are going to move on to the non-standard conditions. So, standard conditions how do you define them? So, we could say that when the temperature is 25 degrees centigrade and the, when the pressure equal to 1 bar and now we have a new term called activity, activity of the particular compound is equal to 1. For example, uh, understand activity as concentration for now right. Uh, we are going to go through that later activity is not the same or equivalent to concentration, but for now you know think of activity as uh, ideal measure of ability of compound to react. So, it gives you an idea about the ability of a particular compound to react right in general let us say uh, we are going to you can for now think of it as the concentration of a particular compound, but we are going to see why we need to uh, look at activity later on. So, when do we uh, so standard conditions what are they again please temperature being 25 degrees centigrade pressure is uh, 1 bar which is more or less equal to I guess 1 atmosphere, but not uh, so you can look this up and when we say activity or uh, which are or let us say activity which we are can approximate by concentration in some cases is equal to 1 right. So, again now we need to calculate Gibbs energies right. So, in general we are always concerned with delta G values though. So, what is this here we are looking at a difference here G 2 pardon me G 1 minus G 2 right. So, for that you know we obviously need the reference right. So, it is like calculating the mean sea level right you in the railway stations and such you would have come across a particular uh, term called the MSL uh, below the nameplate or uh, you know uh, where you have the relevant uh, uh, signage let us say you would have seen a particular term MSL so on. So, I guess obviously it is the mean sea level for that they I guess they set the sea level as the reference. So, in the same case here in our delta G or you know when we are looking at changes in the Gibbs energy we need to set a reference to. So, here we said that the Gibbs energy of formation of elements you know is equal to 0. So, here we have two aspects I guess that we are uh, coming across new terms. 
So, Gibbs energy of formation of a particular compound or element at standard conditions. So, in this case though we are setting our reference as the Gibbs energies of formation of elements at the standard states we are setting that as being 0. So, what does that mean or how will that help us now? Let us say I have element 1 and element 2 you know uh, uh, forming let us say compound I guess right. And since we set the Gibbs energy of the system of the elements to be 0 at the standard conditions and if you want to calculate delta G of this particular reaction that is equal to what now? Uh, I think we looked at this right and I uh, G i bar of what now the products minus and I G i bar of the reactants right. So, that would be equal to here what now? So, here let us say we have the number of the moles or stoichiometric coefficients are 1 here uh, for all the 3 cases here. So, that is more or less going to be equal to the Gibbs energy of uh, formation of compound I minus Gibbs energy of formation of this element 1 minus Gibbs energy of formation of element 2 right. So, but as we just discussed we set these two terms as being 0. So, this will now give us the or the delta G of the reaction would give us the Gibbs energy of formation of again all these are at standard conditions. So, let us keep that in mind here right of compound I. So, at the standard conditions if you can measure the change in Gibbs energy you will thus be able to calculate the Gibbs energy of formation of your compounds. And in general all these are available in uh, your standard uh, uh, tables in most uh, textbooks and certainly in the references that we uh, talked about right. And if you are not sure which one is an element or which one is a compound you can again refer to those standard tables and there you will have the relevant information. So, here I believe I have one example and let us uh, look at that. So, here let us say we have graphite carbon in the form of graphite let us say and 2 H 2 gas going at to form methane C H 4 in the gaseous phase. So, how do I calculate the, uh, so these two are elements here and this is a compound here right. So, I am just trying to draw a corollary here. So, how do I calculate the uh, Gibbs energies I guess of the relevant compounds? So, delta G naught uh, change in Gibbs energy of this reaction at standard conditions is equal to as we know V i mu i or pardon me let us not use mu i here we are talking about Gibbs energy. So, we will talk about uh, G i uh, bar or Gibbs energy of the products minus the summation of V i G i bar of the reactants. So, that is equal to what now here? So, here Gibbs energy of formation which more or less in this case is equal to the molar Gibbs energy I guess of C H 4 minus 1 into what is this now 1 is the stoichiometric coefficient here right. Uh, 1 into what do we have here Gibbs energy of formation of uh, graphite minus 2 times Gibbs energy of formation of uh, hydrogen right in the gaseous phase obviously hydrogen gas pardon me. So, as we just uh, discussed uh, these two are elements and so, uh, hydrogen and graphite are elements and thus the Gibbs energy of formation of those elements we set as 0. So, these two terms would now be 0 and so, the delta G of the reaction standard conditions is the same as Gibbs energy of formation of methane. So, if you can calculate this you can calculate CH 4 or such. So, what will this help us? So, from the elements again I am coming back to the initial equation you can calculate the Gibbs energy of formation of uh, most of the compounds right. So, once you have most of the compounds let us say C 1 uh, and C 2 and so on then you can again. So, now let us say you have the Gibbs energies of formation of C 1 and C 2 right and C 3 and C 4. So, then you can go ahead and without measuring it I guess calculate delta G values at standard conditions of your relevant reactions. So, I gave you I have one last example before we wrap up the class. So, here I guess we have CH 4 plus 2 O 2 goes to CO 2 plus 2 H 2 O. 
So, delta G naught or change in Gibson gel system at standard conditions is equal to sigma of u i Gibbs energy of formation of i product minus summation of mu i Gibbs energy of formation of i at standard conditions of the reactants. So, right. So, delta G naught or delta G R naught whichever way I guess equal to Gibbs energy of formation of carbon dioxide right at standard conditions and plus 2 times Gibbs energy of formation of H2O at standard conditions minus Gibbs energy of formation of what now uh, methane at standard conditions and 2 times Gibbs energy of formation of the hydrogen gas right. And so, you can identify which of these are elements uh, I guess and you already have the uh, Gibbs energies of formation of some of the compounds and then you can end up calculating the delta G of the reaction right. So, I guess uh, we will just summarize uh, what we have been up to for today right. So, we started talking about equilibrium in greater detail and then we talked about uh, how it depends upon delta G and we looked at delta G being negative, positive and 0, 0 equates to obviously equilibrium. And then we looked at some of the driving forces as in standard or change in enthalpy and entropy. Enthalpy gives us an idea about the heat energy let us say or energy in the system and entropy about the degree of disorder. So, again we try to link change in enthalpy or change in entropy to uh, change in Gibbs energy and I believe then we have moved on to talking about Gibbs energies of the mixture. So, G system or of a mixture right what is that equal to I believe it is summation of N i G i bar or G f bar and that we said is also the same as sigma of N i mu i, mu i is the chemical potential right. And then I believe again we try to uh, link that to change in Gibbs energies of uh, uh, during a reaction right. I believe we calculated d g by d x z and then uh, we looked at the relevant changes and so on right. So, I guess with that I will uh, wrap up the class for this session and uh, thank you.